Hello everyone, my name is Muskan and I am a software consultant at Nordis. Today, I will be giving you a session on diving into monads in CATS library. So, before moving forward to today's agenda, let me tell you about my company. Noldus is a team of passionate technologists with a product mindset who work along with businesses to deliver solution at the speed of competitive advantage. Our main capabilities are around reactive products, IoT, microservices and API, data science, data engineering and DevOps. We also have our strategic partnerships with Databricks, Lightbend, Confluent and many more to deliver more values to clients. Now, that's all about my company and now let's move forward to today's agenda. So today I'll be discussing about Monad, basically what is Monad. Then we'll look at Cats library. It will be a brief introduction to Cats library. Then we'll see Monads in Cats library. And then we'll see some monadic instances provided by Cats library. Uh, some different monads that we get when we use CATS library that is either monad, identity monad and eval monad. There are many more also but today we will discuss only these three. Also during this session I will tell you about the advantages that we get on using CATS library as well. Why should we even consider using it when we have Scala standard library right? So, We'll look uh, at all these points. So let's move forward. Now, the first thing is what is Monad? So when I heard about Monad, I googled it and I found something like this, that a Monad is a monoid in the category of endofunctors. Now, this was very, very, very confusing for me. I don't know what is monoid. I didn't know what is endofunctors. And I didn't think that, I don't think that person who first time reads it will even understand it. So I tried to rephrase it, I tried to understand it and then I come up with this that a monad, monad is a mechanism for sequencing computations. Now this is much understandable and it is much explainable as well. So basically monad is something which gives me this power that I can sequence the computation, basically chain up the computations and you know perform them in a sequence. And that's it. Also, I figured out that Monad has at least two methods. Every Monad will have at least two methods. One is pure method and another one is flat map. So pure method is basically which can be used as constructor. It will basically create the uh, object or the value of a given data type. Okay, and then uh, the flat map. Flat map is used for sequencing. Now, if you know Scala, you must know about apply method, and the apply method is same as this pure method. Okay, so now we know. In a nutshell that okay, Monad is something that is used for sequencing computations, it has pure method, it has flat map method to enable this working. Cool. Now, let's move forward and see Monad laws. The first thing why we even do, you know, know about these Monad laws. So, although we are provided with Monads, but and I can even simplify things much more, but we should know some things that are technical as well. Reason behind this is, for example, if you want to create some monad yourself or you want to do an OS contribution or something like that, you should know about monad laws then. So what monad laws says is that the pure and flat map method should follow some of the rules. Whatever monad you are creating, you will have pure and flat map in that. And 
those methods should follow some of the laws you should make those methods keeping in mind these laws so first one is left identity now what left identity say is calling pure and transforming the result with function is the same as calling function so basically if you call pure and then you flat map over it with a function then you can do it directly by calling the function it is same as that other one is right identity now right identity says if uh, you are passing pure to flat map it is the same as doing nothing basically if you have something and you are flat mapping over it with the pure method you are basically just returning that value with which you started and you are doing nothing on it that is right identity now associativity now associativity says that flat mapping over two functions f and g is same as flat mapping over f and then flat mapping over g so here in the first part we can see that we are flat map over f and then flat mapping basically we are flat mapping over f and g but here we are flat mapping over f and then flat mapping over g so this does not matter you do this way or this way they will be equal that is associativity now just keep this points in mind if you want to create some monad yourself so that it works well and will be accepted as monad as well now we know about monad now we have a basic idea about monad so let's move to cats library now what is cats library basically moving before moving to cats library let's what is scala basically scala is a language or uh, scala is a language which is object oriented as well as functional but it is not purely functional right it is trying to be functional as much as possible but it is not purely functional so now what cats does cats also uses scala but now what it does it is trying to make scala library basically it is trying to make the uh, it it is trying to make it more functional basically cat library provides you with abstractions for functional programming in the scala programming language what it is trying to do is it is trying to make scala language much more functional and by making it much more functional it is making it trying to make it much more better now most of the tools provided by cats are implemented as type classes if you know scala you must know about type classes now when you create a type class in scala you have to create instances for that you have to create syntax for that and you know it's a whole process basically to use type classes and to use it perfectly but now with cat cat actually uses type classes it has implemented its tools using type classes for all the basic types but most of the time when you use something in cat you just need to import it and you don't actually need to create a type class for it and that is how it makes the abstract it makes the you know basically provides you a better way of using it or maybe makes it easier for you to use it now whenever you want to use some type class in cats following will be the imports that you will be using for use it perfectly now basically when you want to use a type class 
you will have to import that first so you just need to import cat cats dot whatever the type class name so now we will be discussing about monads so there will be different type classes related to monads that we will be importing now then for getting all the instances basically the basic instances for that we'll we'll use import dot instances dot all this is for uh, importing all the instances at once but you can obviously import a single instance if you want now for getting all the syntax syntax basically provide you with some extension methods with some new better ways to use that uh, type class so basically for getting all the syntax you just need to import cats.syntax.all and uh, that's it you will get all the syntax related to the type class now for maybe if you want to get all the instances and all the syntax together you can just import cats.implicit and that's it that is all you, you should remember for now if you know about the imports you can basically play with cats pretty well because in cats you mostly use things that are already there you can obviously define new monads new um, functors and other things that are provided by cats you can do it always but most of the time cats provides you with these many things that you don't need to do it now we have an idea about cats let's move forward to monads in cats we know about monads we know about cats now we'll see how cats is providing us with monads what will be the advantages of using monads in cats library over the monads in normal scala library okay so basically monad is a simple type class that extends two type classes flat map to get flat map method and applicator for pure method we we know that a monad has pure and flat map method right in cats what it do it basically extends two more type classes to get this these method now these method we'll be discussing them sometime later maybe not in this session it would be out of context so let's stick to it and understand that okay cat extends these type classes to get these methods simple now now the most simple imports for uh, monads in cats will be first for using a monad in code what we'll do we'll just import cats dot monad that's it now for using the ins default instances in the code we will do import cats.instances.all right and for getting monad syntax what we will do we will have to get the syntax for flat map for pure and for, for map as well because it, most of the time monads had map method as well okay so we'll just import the syntax for these three and now after importing these we can see here that monad.pure will create uh will work as constructor and create an option of five here monad is taking an option basically and it is you know we are using pure with five so it will create option of five that is it will work as constructor and create the value for option as we can see this will be the output that is sum of five now when we have some value okay in monad we can obviously flat map over it as well so now we see that okay we have monad of option and we are going to flat map over it but on this value and pass some function and this is what i get the function is applied on the value that we passed to the flat map so simply that is how a flat map works normally and that is how it will work in monad 
but right now it doesn't seem that good like if you have to write monad every time and pass the you know monadic type every time it is not <coughs> that much good but if we get the syntax and uh, if we work on a single monadic instance this can be easier now let's see either monad now what is either first thing so in scala also you must have heard about either either is basically a type which holds the value of one of the possible types either left or either right now the left value holds some error or exception and information regarding that whereas right value holds the correct value of that uh, of whatever computation we are doing and which is returning either basically so either is mostly used when we have some exceptions when we know there could be a time where we where i can get <clears throat> sorry where i can get error or exception and we want to capture it we also want to know about it so there we can use either monad it provides you the information for the error as well and that is why it is good for capturing it now in scala library we simply create a value of right type using the apply method of right and that is what we do obviously use apply method that is pure method in monad right so sorry so we will use right method we sorry not right method but right dot apply and pass it a value and create a value of right type yeah this is the way a value of right or left type is created in scala now just see that we want to create an either monad but the value created by right and left is right and left respectively whereas if we have something like this that if value is not equal to 0 like we are returning right and in the error part we are returning left so obviously uh, scala will try to find a common type for that and then we will get the type, return type as either okay so just focus on these types for now i'll show you the problem with that in the other slide now in cats library when we get the syntax for this then we can create the value of right type and for and for left type using the as right and as left methods okay and the return value for them will be right will be either for both of them and not right or left now even if we are creating only the value of right type then also we will get the return type as either now, this is the difference between the two in in cat library as well you can create the either monad the values for either monad in the in the same scala library way but these are some methods that cats library for provides you for either then why why not use it it has its advantages and we'll see it another slide i'll in a, in the other slide i'll tell you why we can consider using either of cats library rather than scala library what it does it can give me okay so let's consider these points these are some of the points which will explain you why using either in cats will be a better option than either in scala okay so first thing is issue with return type resolve now what do you mean by this so let's look here i have a method 
ओके ना वॉट इज हैपनिंग इज दैट हियर इन फोर लेफ्ट इट इज टेकिंग राइट ऑफ जीरो सो इट इज कंसिडरिंग दैट ओके आई विल गेट अ द रिटर्न टाइप विल बी राइट ओके एंड देन इट इज डूइंग एन इफ एल्स इन साइड द मेथड एंड इन वन पार्ट इट इज रिटर्निंग लेफ्ट नाउ द कंपायलर इज गेटिंग कन्फ्यूज दैट फ्रॉम ह्योर आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट द रिटर्न टाइप इज राइट ह्योर आई अंडरस्टैंड इट इज लेफ्ट here it is not even able to understand what he wants to do so that is why it is getting confused because the type is not either okay here the type is not either in both in both of them here so it is getting confused in the if you if we create this as create the value in the scala standard type way now if we use either from the cats library then we can use as write method and as write method returns either so now if it knows that okay i am expecting either here and now even if we are returning next we are in returning left value or we are doing map map over it or whatever we are doing the common type for this will be either and we are expecting here either as well so using as right solves that problem because of the return type that is that that we get using the extension method as right and as left so this is one advantage of either in cache library over either in scala library then the other advantage is it is write biased what does write bias means is that every method will be directly applied to right value rather than left value and uh, in either in cats library it is right bias okay e either in scala is also right bias but if you are using scala um, version 2.11 or earlier than that then it is not right biased and you will have to you know Uh, every time extract right value and then flat map over it or do whatever functioning over it so it just adds some more code for you not a big issue but still an advantage in either in cats library the other thing is extension methods now this is something which is provided for every monad for every other thing in cats by the cats library okay what are extension method extension method are simply some extra methods that uh, cats library provide us which will basically enhance our working which will ease which will help in our work and ease it so here one of the methods is ensure which basically takes which basically takes a predicate a condition and if that condition passes then we get right as return basically the right value in return otherwise we will get the left value or the failure value that we have given in return it will always ensure that okay my value should pass this predicate for example in this predicate i could have a i could check if the password is correct okay and if it is then then okay otherwise i'll just say okay password is not password is incorrect one of the methods is this ensure and 
this actually helps uh, this is just a one example and there are many many more methods like this now these are some of the advantages of using either in cats library over the either in scala now the other monad is id monad so according to the book what we can see is id is actually a type alias the turns an atomic type integer into a single parameter type constructor okay so uh, now it is a, it is quite confusing to understand it in the book way so id i will rephrase it and in the simple words what i can say is that i monad provides you a monadic instance for non monadic type now this may also be a bit confusing so basically a monadic instance is, is something that is monad uh, uh, value of monad and non monadic is something which is just a value of some simple basic type for example an integer type or a string type okay so for example here uh, although the int variable has been given a value 4 so the return type should be int but i have explicitly given it the type id of int and then also it is not showing me any compilation issue that is now it is wrapped in id monad and now this can be used as monad although it is just an integer but still after wrapping it in id monad i can use it at, as monad now let's see the use case of using the id monad okay so the need of id monads is basically it lets you abstract over monadic and non monadic code now what do you mean by that what do you mean by abstracting over monadic and non monadic code so let's just understand it with an example let us see let's see if like we have this method that is concat strings okay now this concat strings methods takes monad two values of monadic type right and then it basically concat it cool now this functioning can be done on non monadic instances as well although like this is just an example so uh, I haven't I haven't used a very uh, complex method here, so that is why it's just concat strings. So now let's see what will happen when we call this method with monadic values. So if we call this method with monadic values, what it will do? It will just you know concat the values inside the monads and return the monad simply that's it okay but what if i want to you know use concat strings method with not monadic types if i try to do that what it will say that it could not find implicit value for pa evidence parameter of type cats dot monad basically what it wants to say that this is not monad i don't understand this the, that this is monad i can find implicit value for that how will i pass it to this method and that is that is very easy to understand that okay if it's ex expecting monads then obviously it won't consider using non monadic values but what if you want to do the same thing with non monadic values now what will you do will you create a similar method to this just to you know accept non monadic values that would be a code duplicacy how can we re reduce that code duplicacy is by using this id monad so basically i am calling the concat strings method with this with the same two value here but here i have given them type as id of string i have wrap the string in id monad so now it considered this string as a monad and you know 
use it here and return the value to me that's it this is how we can abstract over monadic and non monadic code and this also gives me the you know the power of uh, reducing the code duplication and making my code much more better so that is why we need an id monad and we should consider using it using catch library now the other one is eval monad and basically before diving into eval monad let's understand the modes of evaluation now modes of evaluation basically normal in scala are either eager lazy or memorized now eager is when computations happen immediately lazy is when computations happen on access and memorized is computation happen on first access only and then the results are cached so now if we see scala so can find some things that are related to this model of evaluation basically if we see a val okay any val is basically eager and it is memorized as well basically it is computed immediately and then the and its results are also cached right if we see lazy val then it is lazy and it is memorized as well right and if we see a def a method then the method is basically lazy and it is not memorized neither eager right so now we have like for this model of evaluation we have some things in scala which we are using normally now let's see what we have in catch library under the eval monad okay so basically eval monad is something that is used for evaluation okay now it has three type three sub types first is eager sorry first is now and now is basically eager and memorized much similar to val in scala sample library what do you mean what i mean by eager and memorized is that basically if i create a value and the creation of value is simple as eval dot now okay and if i create a value of now sub type for the eval monad then if we see it was calculated at the exact time i have added a print without even calling the value so one thing is for extracting the value of an eval we have to call this value method but without even calling the value method i can see that it was calculated and when i you know call the value in the other uh, at the other time then i see that it is same as above just the value is extracting from extracted from now and if i called it again then it, it is same as the above showing that it was memorized already also the uh, when i printed now the first time without even calling the value then it shows that it was calculated eagerly at the same point when it was you know declared okay so now we know what is now sub type the other one is later the later is lazy and memorized much similar to lazy well now the later if we see first time i am trying to print later without even calling its value so now i see that i just get an object as it wasn't uh, uh, computed because i haven't accessed its value till now now when i access its value other time it is calculated and when i access its value uh then i see the same value that i see before so now i can say that okay 
because it was uh, calculated on its axis that is why it is la lazy and because the value that I get on other axis is also the same as the first one that is that shows me that it the value was cached at one and was not calculated again and again okay now we have always always is lazy and non-memoized which is much similar to diff in scholar library now uh, the first time i tried to print it without even calling the value i get some object rather than the calculated value now when i tried to call the value on it so on its excess it is calculated that shows that it is lazy and when i tried to access its value again mm -hmm, it was calculated again so that shows that it was basically not memorized now you can see a similarity here in now later always uh, with well lazy well and def in scala standard library so why should we even consider using a monad for them right we can just use var lazy val so why should we consider using them so first thing to remember is that this is a monad and monadic subtypes so with using now later and always we also get the power and the ability that monads provide us rather than just simple val lazy val and defs for an instance we can map over these we can basically um map over these values flat map over these values which i can't do on val or lazy val so because it provides us the uh, advantages of a monad that is why we should consider using get also in the in the next slide i'll tell you about the advantages so why well monad so the first thing that i told you is map and flat map paper and flat map method which are helpful in chaining methods so obviously we can see that uh, we can use we can easily flat map over them and we can have we can you know just uh, do our computations after chaining the methods right the other part is we have a memoize capability in chaining methods here we know that using map flat map or for loop which actually uses uh, them we can basically chain methods but we can also memoize me memory we can also memoize now what i mean by that is for example you have some functioning in which you know that till this point if the calculation is done one time the calculation will be same every time it won't change but it will be calculated every time in normal uh, by using normal map and flat map right now this memoize capability gives me this power that i can cache or basically memoize the result till this point and next time when it will be calculated it the memoized value value will be used it won't be calculated till this point till the point which i have used memoize and it will be calculated after that only so here in this example i can see that i have memoized it till this point so when first time i i accessed its value then step 1 was printed step 2 was printed step 3 was also printed and then it was printed that same first exercise uh, and all those things okay then the second time when i access the value with memoize i expect that till this point 
the result was cached and step 1 and step 2 should not be printed and that is the case here we can see that only step 3 is printed because the because till the memoize the result was cached and it wasn't calculated again only this part is calculated so step 3 was printed again and this part is only calculated again now this capability is not provided to us by standard library so this standard library or basically val or lazy val or devs even so this could be one reason for using eval or not now uh, that's all from my side this was all that i wanted to tell you about the monads and uh, and thank you so much for listening to me these are some references that are uh, basically from where I have read this, these are some of my blogs that I have written after reading this book and this book is the key for learning cards. So please go through them you have, if you have any questions to ask me and um, that's all about it. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can always contact me. You can, ping, uh, you can mail me or just contact me on LinkedIn. Thanks a lot for listening to me with this much patience.